I'm going to present this to an individual who is living history. Mr. Charles Smith was on the USS Gamble that day, some 74 years ago, I guess as a 23-year-old Navy individual. But, sir, it's an honor not only to present this to you, but to be in your presence today. Oh, they didn't say in the uh, program what your rank was. What was your rank? I was a seaman first class. Okay. Uh, so were you fresh out of the academy? Oh, no. I was, I, was a, I was drafted. I worked in Newark, New Jersey, and I was drafted in, I guess it was 39 or 40. You had to join something at that time. Mm -hmm. You were, what, 18 years old? Uh, well, I'm not, yeah, because... Uh, when Pearl, I was 21, going on 22, so I was no kid. I was, could drink legally. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's what the, the Navy was. But, so I joined the Navy, and I, I was a, when I, in uh, Newport, Rhode Island, boot camp, and then San Diego, and then out to uh, Hawaii, and then on to the, I, I was first assigned to the Ogallala, USS Ogallala, sort of a repair ship for a mine division. Mm -hmm. the, the gamble, my ship, was uh, a uh, destroyer mine layer. Uh, she was converted from one of the old four pipe 1980 vintage. And uh, See, when I went first aboard, she was in dry dock in, in Pearl. Uh, was that like a sought-after uh, assignment to get sent to Hawaii back in those days? Uh, well, it, to me, it was a glorified, as a young man, I said, well, if I'm going to have to go somewhere, <laughs> I said, I'm not going in the infantry because I get shot there. You know? Right, and, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I won the cushy. So, and I had visions of sitting on the gun of a battleship or something, you know, waving my white hat, uh, as a young man would. And uh, I get this old beat up can. And, but she was a great ship. I mean, for an all, about 150 guys on board. And uh, I don't know how many officers, 10 maybe. Mm -hmm. But wasn't, wasn't big. Mm -hmm. but, and we were nested, the Mine Division Two, nested, just this side, actually from here to the street, from the USS Curtis, Fort Island, and then the Carrier Burst, Utah, and he, we were sitting about here with four ships, the uh -huh. four in the division. They were all ranged together. Yeah, well, we used to nest together nest. when we were in port. Okay. That's what they call it. Mm -hmm. We were out board mm -hmm. And then Pearl hit. Frankly, I've been in a lot more dangerous places in my life, I think, than, than I was there. I saw it all. It was, But I don't believe anyone on our ship got hit. Our ship got strafed, but luckily off the forecastle by a gun. And uh, we were... I guess, I think it was about 8 o'clock and then 9.30 at 10 o'clock we got on the way. Mm -hmm. Went out and, and uh, uh, convoyed the Enterprise was coming in because the carriers were all out, luckily. Mm -hmm. The carriers were out. That was a major I factor in how effective the, the attack was. Yeah, I think they were coming back from Midway, Midway somewhere. They'd been hit out there. They'd been fighting out Midway, too. Mm -hmm. So we took them in. We went into fuel. And then uh, after everything subsided, we were loaded with mines, maybe 60 mines, sent down to Pago Pago, down South Pacific. And I was there about 1943, before I got back. Those, those, those were the times that, uh, you know, Island, Tulagi, Guadalcanal, New Georgia, 
to, uh, New Guinea. It was all South Pacific and so. Mm -hmm. And I think I heard you mention that uh, you don't talk a lot about that day. Is that right? Uh, I, I really, uh, I don't know what I, I'd have to look it up, I guess, because my memory is not too zippy. Uh, in my mind, the things that, uh, other than being there, I don't think that there's anything that I did that was memorial. You know, to, well, you were you were there. You were a part of the team, and you know your your contribution was no no less important than anyone else who was there. I think that's I think that's true. Yeah, and I admire the guys. And when I think about it, when I hear these people talk today uh, about the situation we have and how do we resolve it, it seems the only thing to send more troops. In. Mm -hmm. To me, to me, it's it's such a waste. I don't know of anyone that's alive on my ship, the Gamble, that was sunk at the end of the war, which I wasn't aboard. I I got transferred in 1944 mm -hmm. in Australia. We were uh, uh, New Zealand, New Caledonia, and uh, I went back to the States for shore duty, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Wound up Bureau Naval Personnel, met my wife, came to Annapolis. So that experience taught you that, you know, you don't think that, that war is always the answer? I certainly don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know it's necessary. Uh, certainly, certainly we've had enough war. I mean, there's so many other things that, that to me, it's it's uh, it's a waste of young men's lives, and I sort of was quite in agreement with the president that he said, "Hey, we're getting it done." Uh, thank God. One guy said they they flew eight eight thousand sorties over in Syria. That's right. About eight thousand, mm -hmm. and they think that's nothing. Did they have a blow of, up out of there? Of bombs. Can you can you imagine? No. I blow your ears up. Not yeah. only that, kill you. When, but anyway, when we had um, the attacks on 9/11 and the way the country responded to that, obviously you were you were on assignment. You were far away from the mainland. But did did that make you remember 1941 Pearl Harbor? Or did the feeling that the country had well, was it similar or was it different? I've always, uh, since since I was in the service and came home and started a, all together, I was 12 years, I stayed 12 years in the Navy. But then I was married and had a kid and uh, two children, beautiful wife here in, on, on broad, broad neck, but she died. And uh, I started a business, I told her, uh, uh, Mr. Shu, I would, I was the uh, uh, light assistant controller for about 30 years in Annapolis. Really? In the, uh, for the city? I worked for Joe Walton, and remember they used to call it the Banana Republic? You know, yes. Back in the days. Uh, you worked for Joe Walton? Uh, uh, well, in his administration, uh -huh. yeah, when the charter government came in. Uh -huh. So I got a lot of old friends. Right now, it's so uh, it was such a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Shu. The uh, well, I think the pleasure was his, and the pleasure was mine. I mean, we're we're so honored to have a treasure like yourself right here, living in Broadneck, right in our midst. Oh, and I'm glad that we got to meet you. Yeah, and uh, I managed. I went. I went to college. I, I got an accounting degree. I bought out of business. And I have a liquor store in uh, Cape St. Clair, Bella's Liquors. Oh, it. Bella's? Yeah. Okay. That's my. I'm sure a lot of people know <laughs> Bella's. <laughs> I guess they do. Yeah. So um, I just have one more question for yeah. you. Can you walk me through sort of what it, what it looked like, what you were observing when, when this was happening? All right. I had the cleaning station on the gamble. That's the well deck where people come aboard and then the 
uh, officer of the day hangs out. Mm -hmm. That was my job the first thing about six o'clock, clean that all up. Mm -hmm. I'm standing there having a cup of joe and uh, uh, a radio man, Cobb, I remember him very well in there. We're talking, we hear this, oh, well, it's 7.30, whatever you know, bomb. And we look over and we both said, well, it must be, uh, you know, maneuvers. Planes are coming over. Mm -hmm. But we saw the Utah just belly up. And our skipper was ashore. Half the crew was ashore. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to Sunday. Right. And uh, the gunnery officer was in charge. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Bogart, he yelled down at the Japanese attack. Man your battle station. I was a loader on a five inch gun. Mm -hmm. So I go up there and I open the thing and I'm half the shoulder about this long. Wow. All, all I did is pull them, uh, shove them in, but the uh, bosun yells up, at, forget it, you can't use them. Because of the range? And, and, no, they can. No other, but what we needed was aircraft, like 30 calibers or 50 calibers. Mm -hmm. uh, or three, we had one three inch gun, I think, on mm -hmm. focal. No great armament. But that was, that was a crowd of planes. I mean, they were. And strafing one of them even kamikaze into, uh, into the Curtis. Wow. Uh, we were right next to the Curtis. So wow. we're, we're figuring one's going to. But anyway, it was. And we got on the way. We do, even we had depth charges. We dropped them all along the carrier berths, and uh, because they thought there was a one-man sub. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, someone. Uh -huh. We went out in offshore patrol, and as I said before, I mean, it was uh, with it all. I I, I only know because I, I was a strong guy. <laughs> And, uh, and Pataki says, get down below. There was a radio shack and a hatch, and we had 50 caliber boxes there. Now, mm -hmm. these things weigh 150 pounds or so. I was going to say, got, heavy. Ah, you got to lift them up, mm -hmm. send them up to the bridge with a 50 caliber, mm -hmm. which were firing, mm -hmm. you know. So, luckily, as long as nothing hit, where these are stored, I'm, I'm in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been very, very fortunate. So you're being modest. You said you didn't have much to do with it. <laughs> I, I knew you weren't telling me the truth on that. <laughs> well, <laughs> Always modest. Well, <laughs> I, I, I feel it was, uh, yeah, duty. I was a young man, and I, I lived for uh, Weekends going ashore in Hawaii. Sure, you know, sure. I love beer and drinking and that. I mean, and to me, uh, that ship, I, I mean, we, you cruise when the, you take it five or six, maybe only cruise maybe 10, 12 knots. You cruise way the hell down to uh, Australia and around, you know? Wow. Brisbane, Sydney. Uh, it was a great story for me. Absolutely. Yeah, and I was awful lucky. And, but, you know, not many people can point to the day when they when they grew up, but I think that would be safe to say that would be the day you grew up, right? That's right. That's right. And hopefully, as one of the guys said, I'll see you next year. That's right. I heard that. <laughs> we will uh, see you next year. Uh, well, thank I, you, I, sir. I sure hope so. Thank you thank for your you, service sir. and thank you for talking with us about it. Really yeah. appreciate it. And thanks for taking the time. Of because, course. Because the kids should know that it's, uh, things are happening today. Yeah, it is very important for them, for them to hear from you, too. So I would appreciate you doing that. Them, but I don't want to see them. I don't want to see them. Uh, no. And then because we can't figure out a way to. And. I don't believe anyone can at the moment. And I think the president, take it easy. Mm -hmm. Do it right. And uh, think it through. That's right. So, Thank you, sir.